95.3 WBCK now presents Coach's Corner, live from Lakeview Ford. For over six decades, this has been your number one source for all local sports information. Coach's Corner is proudly presented by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Now, here's your host, Bill Broderick. Uh, this is Bill Broderick, uh, sports editor of the Ballot Green Choir in the big chair once again at WBCK for Coach's Corner in downtown Ballot Creek at Lakeview Ford on the Motor Mile. For more than six decades, Coach's Corner has been talking to the city high school coaches about the week in sports, and we'll continue that this week as uh, we have the boys basketball coaches coming in to talk to us and chat a little bit about what's been going on. But first, here's the Lakeview Ford Coach's Corner scoreboard. Our uh, city teams were off for much of the holiday break, but we did have the Chuck Turner Classic to keep high school hoop fans entertained with a fun two days of ball at the Bell Creek Central Fieldhouse. Among the action uh, over those couple days, uh, St. Philip opened things up on the Wednesday of that week and lost to Union City 47-39. In one of the marquee games of the evening, uh, Lakeview beat Harper Creek 83-45. And in the final game with a shootout on uh, Thursday, Penfield beat Bow Creek Central 49-29. On uh, day one, Bow Creek Central uh, got their first win of the year and beat Redford Westfield, and they won 66-50. to In uh, girls uh, basketball at the Chuck Turner Classic, uh, Harbor Creek beat Lakeview 41-36. to Bucky Central knocked off St. Philip 77 to 34. And the BCC girls were able to get two games in. They beat Union City 65 to 11 in the second game that they played over the weekend. And Amaya Hodges continues her hot streak. She had over 30 points in both those games for the Bearcat wins. In other action during the break, Lakeview went over and played in the Parma Western Invitational and won that championship. They beat Sturgis on the first day 63 to 21. And then they got a win over Loy Norwich in the championship game of that uh, two-four team tournament. In the final, 68-67 on a buzzer beater by the Spartans' LeBron Campbell. We'll be back with our first coach of the morning after this break on 95.3 FM WBCK. Coach's Corner on WBCK, brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Now back to the show. We're back with our first coach of the morning, Coach Kimber of the St. Phil Fighting Tigers. How's it going, Coach? Morning, Bill. Uh, St. Phil, uh, like the rest of the teams in the area, had a light schedule over the break. Uh, you guys got one game in and ended up playing uh, Union City in the Chuck Turner Classic there and lost 47 to 39. Uh, Jackson Diswick had 17 points and, and uh, you guys went to four and three and that first half of the season there kind of ended that way as kind of a natural breaking point but in that game at the field house uh, how did you feel like you guys played and was that a was that a fun day despite the score I think I mean yeah it was a fun day despite the score um, we just we, we went on a massive scoring drought to start the third quarter so the second half in general um, we really didn't get it going in the second half at all um, and that was a big issue um, credit to them they played a great game their their trap gave us all sorts of troubles um, we had uh, unusual amount of turnovers that night the uh, the fact that you guys uh, stopped the first half of the season kind of in the natural breaking point at, at four and three talk about how that plays in your mind I mean that's uh, maybe not as well as you want it to be but uh, it's it's progress from last year I think is what yeah it, it definitely it's progress from last year I mean we're uh, I mean I, I look at each game um, and and I don't necessarily look at the outcome of it I look to see uh, how we played what we're doing as a team I think I think basketball wise we're, we're we're doing well I think we're a little bit maybe ahead of schedule in terms of that um, obviously the result against uh, Union City, Bellevue and Bronson we would have liked to be better but um, you know those are all three really solid teams that we've lost to and we've picked up a couple solid wins against Callan Christian, Menden and Colin so um, really really excited for after the break and really getting things going And with you it's all about like you said making uh, progress for all your players who are all underclassmen and, and making sure that they, they, they're moving forward. And what's like specifically about uh, 
some of those guys in terms of the, the inroads that they made this year and they came into the season kind of on a roll and uh, and playing well early. And uh, what do you want to see from them in the second half a little bit more? Yeah, uh, no doubt Jackson Dismuk's having a, a great season offensively. Um, he's doing a really good job at passing the ball, finding our post players. I noticed that uh, in our Union City film. I watched that a little bit um, yesterday, and so I kind of refreshed myself for this today. Um, but uh, there's guys like Chris Gaona. He's he's taking huge strides. It might not show up on a nightly basis in the in the paper, but um, he's a kid who's if he's not getting rebounds, he's creating rebounds. Um, Sawyer Weiss is another guy who's taken tremendous strides. He's uh, he, he's another rebound cleaner. He I think he's got back-to-back games of 10 rebounds. Um, so really, really thrilled with where he's at. Um, there's some things I'd like to see uh, get a little bit better from a couple guys. Um, you know, limiting the turnovers. I think that's a, that's a hole in the guard room. Um, you know, Carter this week's got a little slow start this season on the offensive end, but um, he's also been hampering a little bit of a injury, so um, hoping in this second half of the season, it's not really the halfway point, but almost. Um, really hoping he can get it going because um, he's a solid ball player, and when we can get him going, um, we you know we got we got shooters all over the outside, um, and then I'm seeing a guy like Lincoln Diswick who's making tremendous strides with his his post move development. He's really really getting to his shots and. and Last year he would get to his spots, but he wouldn't make them. But this year there he's starting to see him drop. So I'm getting some more consistency out of him. And health wise, you guys are feeling pretty good. I know you had uh, guys on the bench the first part of the season. Any of those guys are gonna be able to come back injury wise? Uh, um, I'm not 100 percent sure on that one for sure. Uh, I know against Union City we were without Nate Rappelje, our, our starting okay. five man. He was uh, sick. Um, that day running at 103 temperature, so uh, we told him to stay away. Uh, but we're really not sure on the long-term uh, injury list right now. Um, hopeful, but not 100% sure. You have a couple games this week coming up. Uh, looks like you're playing Athens, uh, the, the Wednesday game. Uh, is that a Tuesday game? Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday game. Tuesday. And, and then the big rivalry game uh, against Climax Scotts on Friday. That's something that... Uh, Comic Scots and St. Phil always kind of look forward mm-hmm. to. Uh, what do you have to kind of prepare for when you get the second after this holiday break? Uh, practices aren't always great over the break in terms of uh, focus and uh, getting guys ready, but then you want to hit the ground running in the second half and then you don't want to see any rust to begin with because you can go through half of a game and then you can be behind and uh, you can lose the game all out of the break and, and not even uh, realize it till it's too late, but uh, is it something that you have to kind of focus on the next couple of days to make sure that doesn't happen? Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, we we're not we're off today practice wise. Um, won't practice tomorrow because of uh, church rule. Um, but we'll be back on Monday to practice, and then with our game on Tuesday with Athens. I mean, um, no slight at Athens at all. Um, but I, I'm glad we have who we have. Um, first game out of the break instead of you know opening up against you know a, a Bellevue or <laughs> or a Colon or somebody who is a, a powerhouse in the league and then um, for myself honestly I have to do a better job at prepping the boys so um, Friday will be a big challenge I know we'll be looking forward to playing Climax I mean they knocked us out last year in the districts at the, at, at the buzzer so um, I'm making sure that all all cylinders are firing for all guys including myself um, in preparation for um, Climax on Friday. The thing with Climax the last couple of years has always been uh, their big man in the middle. They have a uh, six foot seven Miles Shannon and and against your uh, roster that's especially uh, a challenge for you guys with, with not very many people over six two on your on your team there and um, the rest of their team isn't real big, especially their guards are, are a little small but uh, but he can give you guys some problems if you're not ready for that. And um, is it what? What can you do against any team that has kind of a big man in the middle that that wants to force the ball inside and, and, and kind of play that way? Yeah, I will say we we, we might be undersized and height wise, but we do got some guys who they work their tails off when it comes to blocking out. Um, I mean, really, to be honest, it's going to be no secret. I mean, Coach Ken Sattler will know this. Um, I'm probably going to put Christian Gayona on him in the middle and just force him to lean on lean on miles and, and push him out of the way because i mean i i don't know if there's a man stronger than christian gallon in our conference so i'm definitely gonna 
Uh, definitely going to make sure Christian's on him all times um, whenever he's in the paint, uh, just leaning on him and, and making him feel the pressure. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to that game. Uh, Climax Scott's later later in the week at Sheila Guerra Stadium, uh, Gymnasium, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. While we have you here, Coach, uh, we know that amongst our uh, coaches here that come down on Saturday, you, you're one of the bigger Michigan fans that we have here. <laughs> and uh, there's a big game coming up in a couple of days with the Wolverines and National Championship. We don't often get to talk about National Championship game and football around these parts, and but we do this year. And uh, Michigan had a... Uh, a real fun game in the semifinal, and they have a, a big, uh, big matchup there against Washington in the national championship game. I bet you're kind of excited about that. Oh uh, yeah, really excited. Um, I, I, let's just say if Michigan is to win it Monday night, uh, Tuesday our game, my boys are going to hear a lot of me because <laughs> I'm going to probably be more fired up than I've ever been in my life. So yeah, I mean, I think saying I'm a big Michigan fan would be a, a little understatement. There you go. A little analysis about that game. Uh, they're they're facing the past happy Washington group, and uh, yeah, but Michigan wants to run the ball a little bit. That's uh, that's a uh, contrast in styles, that, like we always see. Uh, the, uh, how do you think that kind of fares with those two guys, those two teams? I think Michigan's physicality is just going to overcome to them. I mean, I mean, Michael Penix is a great quarterback, but at the end of the day, I I, I just feel like Michigan's going to just going to you know play that smash mouth football and. Uh, wear them down like that. I think Fox calls them the, the boa constrictor. I think that's what they're going to do to Washington all night long. That'll be a lot of fun, too. So I don't know if that's going to be any bigger than the Climax Scott St. Phil game on Friday, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. <laughs> but we'll have fun watching both of them. And we'll talk a little bit more about high school basketball when we all get back together next Saturday at Coach's Corner. Thanks a lot for coming down, Coach. Thanks, Bill. All right, we'll be back with our next coach in the morning here on WBCK 95.3 FM. Coach's Corner on 95.3 WBCK. Proudly brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Here's Coach's Corner. That's Bill Broderick, uh, Valkyrie Inquirer, back here on Coach's Corner. Uh, you know, everyone, the flu bug has been going around, all around, I've noticed, and a lot of people are getting sick, and that includes our superhero coaches, of course, and uh, we have a couple coaches under the weather, so we're going to be a little light on our roster today, and we don't necessarily have people on the bench that can step in and play, but uh, uh, Coach Burns is not feeling well, and Coach Bowling of Harper Creek is not feeling well, so we're going to take this segment and talk about what's coming up next um, in the high school basketball schedule here, and uh, chat with myself, of course, a little bit about... Uh, the season so far, but uh, coming up, like we talked about, with Coach Kimber there, St. Phil does have two games coming up. They are playing Athens on Tuesday, and the Climax Scots on Friday. Really, that Climax Scots game on Friday maybe a little bit of a measuring stick game for St. Phil. St. Phil really feels like they want to kind of get over the hump this year with the roster that they have in terms of the guys who have been in the been on the in the program for a couple of years, and they're ready to take the next step. And uh, that is uh, the idea that uh, this is the next step for them, and and, and it's a good challenge. Climax Scotts with a with Miles Shannon at six foot seven, and, and a Climax Scotts team that can be troubled if you don't play them the right way. But if St. Phil can uh, knock off Athens and knock off Climax Scotts, that really sets them up for the second half of the season and makes them feel like that they can have some progress going forward. Um, have a we have a in the city. The rest of the city games here. They have a busy schedule as the, as we kind of come out of the break here. Valkyrie Central is uh, playing on a back to back night later in the week. They're not playing Tuesday, but they're going to play Stevensville Lakeshore at home on Thursday, and then they uh, get Harper Creek at home on Friday. That Harper Creek Valkyrie Central rivalry is kind of blossomed in the last several years as Harper Creek had a little run against the Bearcats uh, won several in a row and then Valkyrie Central got back last year with that senior dominated team that the Bearcats had last year uh, Valkyrie Central only has the one win this year that they got over the break and uh, they, they're still feeling like they can start turning things around with a young team that are that's starting to come together and how those guys kind of mature is going to be the key to the second half of the season for the Bearcats this is the start of that to see how things go. Uh, Harbor Creek team that is also young 
also has been up and down in terms of wins and losses at the start of this year. Uh, getting them at the field house on Friday, it'll be a, a good test for both those teams to see kind of where they stand as they kind of come out of the break. Um, Harbor Creek itself, with that, that Friday game, they have a, they're playing Penfield on a Tuesday, at Penfield on Tuesday, and uh, the idea that uh, back-to-back city rivalry games in one week, it can, it can be emotional uh, up and down for the, the, the Beavers, how they kind of go through that and how they kind of work through that is, is going to be the key. Both of them on the road, at Penfield in a rivalry game that those two teams are kind of uh, butt heads the last several years, and, and there have been some high emotions for those those games whenever that's been played and the Valkyrie Central that the Beavers always get up for. Harbor Creek is uh, coming off the loss in the in the Chuck Turner Classic. Uh, Lakeview took care of them pretty well and uh, Harbor Creek kind of uh, has that bad taste in their mouth and they want to try to take care of that when they play at Penfield on Tuesday and they come back and play the Bearcats. Talking about Penfield, though, they have that game against Harbor Creek at home on Tuesday, and then they have another home game at Coldwater against Coldwater on Friday. That It's a big I-8 game. That's Those two teams have kind of uh, battled it out the last several years, a lot on the line. Uh, Coldwater has also been struggling with a young team this year, and, and Penfield is kind of trying to find their footing. Um, Penfield has that nice win over Battle Creek Central at the Chuck Turner Classic, and, and that should give them some confidence going in the second half. Playing Harper Creek and Coldwater at home in, in one week uh, really could set them up to get things going in the second half and, and see how they kind of play that. No team has had a, a, a better holiday break than uh, the Lakeview Spartans. They uh, had the big uh, win over Harper Creek in the Turner Classic, uh, put up a lot of points there. And then they turned around and decided we're going to play a couple more, more games over the holidays and played in the Parma Christmas tournament for the first time. Uh, took care of Sturgis in the first game in a one-sided uh, contest and then beat Loy Norix on a buzzer beater in, in the championship game. Uh, for Lakeview to get uh, three wins over the holiday break, that's, that's big for the Spartans as they are feeling like they could have a special season. And how that's kind of coming together is is uh, gives them kind of confidence going forward and uh, see how that kind of goes with them and how that kind of plays if they can gain that momentum or continue that momentum when they get deep into the smack schedule where the they're playing some of the heavyweights there, we'll be find we'll find out how that kind of goes. The uh, the uh, the rest of the season, what talking about uh, Lakeview Spartans going forward, they play on um, they play a couple games this week. They're playing uh, only only play one game this week. They're playing a. Uh, at Porter's Northern on Friday? No, that's wrong. I have the wrong schedule here. They're playing Lloyd Norris again. And that's kind of a back-to-back situation. They, they got them playing in the holiday tournament. They're going to play them on Thursday. So there'll be some familiarity there. We'll, we'll be back with our next coach in the morning. We'll talk about the second half of the season with the Lakeview Spartans and Coach Wickman here when we get back from this break on 95.3 FM, WBCK. Coach's Corner on WBCK, brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Now back to the show. This is Bill Broderick back on Coach's Corner here, and uh, we're here with Coach Wickman of the Lakeview Spartans. And um, the Lakeview Spartans have had a pretty good week, and uh, to say the least, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun to talk about, so I'm glad you're down here talking about it. Yeah, I'm glad, we're, <laughs> glad I'm here too, Bill. Yeah, you it's talk a, only, I'm <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we, uh, well, we start with... Uh, you guys put on a show in the Chuck Turner Classic at the, at the Field House and played your rival Harbor Creek Beavers. And the fact that you guys kind of came away with an 83 45 win, everything you guys put up kind of went down. Uh, the rim looked awful big to a lot of your shooters there. And that was a fun night at the Field House for the Spartans. Yeah, it was a great night for us. Um, you know, just a lot, of, a lot of positive things happening. Um, you know, it's always, as, I, as we've talked for many years now, it's always a, an honor and, and a treat to get to play down at the field house during the Christmas tournament and, you know, have your team understand a little bit of history of Battle Creek basketball and um, just the idea that that place 
is more than a gym. Um, so yeah, it was it was nice for us to go down there and play, and uh, a little icing on the cake to play as well as we did. So that was that was good to see. Yeah, started fast and you uh, kept kept it going from there. Uh, growing eighty three points in front of that crowd, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Jake Harchek, uh was the straw that stirred the drink that night. He had uh, eight three pointers. Not too many nights where a Lakeview Spartan is knocking down eight threes. Uh, uh, that must be really good coaching that night for you. Yeah, of course it was. <laughs> go st- stand there and go shoot. Yeah. Um, no, Jake was on fire, uh, and he's he's been shooting the ball well. But something like that's kind of a a special night for him. Um, you know, I, we, I was watching the film again, and he he actually. Made, only made one of his first four shots, and then he made I think seven in a row before he missed again. So um, that's you know that's one of those nights where you you know you just you know it's going in, and soon you could probably drop kick it and it would go in because you, you have that kind of feeling. But um, you know he was open a lot and, and did did the damage that he needed to do. And I you know got to give the rest of our guys credit for realizing like you know get Jake the ball, <laughs> he's on fire right, right. you know, and so. Um, I think Malachi and, and LeBron did a nice job of trying to make sure that he got the ball when he needed it. Did we get a chance to uh, look to see how close that was to a record school record for, eight, for triples in the game? No, I have not had that right. opportunity. 28 points in that game for him, uh, a career high for him, and uh, 8 for 12, like you said, from the three-point line. And, uh, like, and getting him the ball and getting people in, in those spots to, to, to make something happen, uh, LeBron Campbell and Malachi Bell uh, did a good job with that. And, they also played well themselves. Uh, 18 points for uh, LeBron and 11 points and six rebounds for Malachi. And your guard rotation is really kind of driving this team right now, and, and, and that really showed against the Beavers. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, offensively our guards are, are definitely, uh, as you put it, drive, driving the bus or whatever. Um, they're, uh, you know, it, it's kind of uh, – right now at least scoring wise a three-headed monster a little bit you know and I think um you know we still have a couple guys that could jump in there too but um you know between LeBron and and Kai and and now Jay coming on strong and you know I think we could get Lucas Dizwick going a little bit and I think we could get Zach Kaharchek going a little bit more um you know but Right now, we're pretty pleased with with the three headed monster, and we just we need to try to develop a little bit more, um, a little bit more inside scoring if we can as the season goes on. And in the past, uh, that was really the only time you you would play uh, over the break. I know back in the day, you'd try to slip in the game against Gull Lake, uh, uh, also over the holidays. But uh, in the last several years, you'd only play in the Chuck Turner Classic, and then, then you kind of be off. This year, you guys decided to dip your whole toe into another game and then you played in the Parma Western uh, Christmas tournament over there. Talk about that re- the, that thought process and why you decided to do that and was that a good thing for you? Yeah, you know, so you, you never know because we've never done that. You know, I've never done that. Um, to, to play those two games, the second week of Christmas break has always been just kind of a, a you know a week to practice and get ready and um, you know, the, the invitation came out in the summer sometime and we were looking for games still at that point and, and I said you know what let's 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 see what happens let's try it and see and um, I think it was good for our guys I think it was good um, you know because sometimes practice over break gets a little mundane or it can I don't know that it, that it necessarily has to be that way but it can and uh, so you know it's good to have those games to look forward to and then um, you know, you, you're constantly, obviously games are always, you know, they're like a quiz in, in classroom, right? They're, you know, you're always looking to see how much better are we getting, how much how much better are things going for us. And um, a lot of times you miss that, those quizzes over break because you don't have any games. And so, um, you know, I, if, we, if we had lost both games, we might be saying, saying something different right now. But, um, you know, we, we beat Sturgis the first night. Uh, they're kind of struggling this year, and then uh, our, our championship game on Thursday night. Um, Norks battled all the way to the end. I mean, it was it was a classic. Like we, it seems like all the time when we play Norks, it's they're usually pretty tight games. So yeah, you uh, played Sturgis and you won sixty three to twenty one. There, you got off yeah. got off fast, nineteen to seven lead in the first quarter, and then. A 22-2 advantage in the second quarter, so the game was kind of over at halftime, and uh, 
guys stepping up for you once again. Uh, you know, LeBron Campbell uh, again, 16 points for him, and then a really balanced scoring after that. As it was one of those games where you got everyone in the game, and um, getting that first one out of the way, and then getting ready for the back-to-back. Uh, is there anything you want to do against her just and give some guys some rest when you knew they're going to play the next night? How how that kind of oh go? for sure yeah when we when we went into halftime it was I think forty one to nine and um, I you know I basically you know we started our starters going into the third quarter and then they got to play about four minutes and then we just took them out and made sure that they got plenty of rest and you know that's you, we got lucky on that you know you know that in in the meantime Norwich was playing a double overtime game that night so. So I don't know if that had anything to do with the outcome on Thursday or not, but um, we definitely uh, made an effort in the second half to, to get some guys some rest. And I was looking at our our minutes, and I think we had I, I think we had ten out of our twelve guys play. No, eleven out of twelve play ten minutes or more in that game. So um, you know, and I don't think anybody played more than fifteen minutes. So that was nice. And you kind of end up playing Lloyd Norris in Lloyd Norris in the second game there, and. Uh... A team that you see a lot of, and uh, yeah, and the, even first game, eight, first quarter, eighteen to sixteen in the first quarter, and you jump on them a little bit in the second quarter, eighteen to eight. They figure something out in the, at halftime, and they go on a twenty-nine sixteen uh, a little run in the third quarter, and then made things real tight at, at the end. LeBron Campbell uh, had the game winner at the buzzer, um, but then. The, and he had a huge game himself, 29 points, uh, another big game for him. Talk about that last play and how that kind of went and how those last couple of minutes went for the for Spartans there. Yeah, so, you know, we were we had the lead the whole game. Um, and then Norix, you know, they as they typically do, they just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And um, we got really, really quick in the, in the toward the end of the third quarter, early in the fourth. And took some bad shots and, and kind of played into their hands a little bit. Um, give them a lot of credit for ramping up their defense and stuff. But I think our guys got a little bit antsy and, and we started doing some things that we don't normally do. And um, so long story short, came down to they scored with, I think, eight and a half seconds left to take their first lead of the game at, at 67, 66. And then um, we just drew something up for LeBron to, you know, we knew we had plenty of time for him to drive the whole length of the floor. And um, so we um, we just drew something up for him to get the ball and get him going. And he, he made a couple really nice moves. I think he split a couple guys and uh, got all the way to the rim, made the layup as the buzzer went off and everybody went nuts. The, uh, <laughs> the idea that you kind of lean on a guy like that, that's, uh, that doesn't happen every year where you have a go-to player, but you do have a go-to player this year with LeBron, and you've talked about that a little bit before, where you want to make sure the ball is, is in his hands at the key parts, and then he's going to get a lot of shots up because he's proven that he can make those shots, and that, that's a good way for your team to run. Uh, LeBron's season has been going really well, 29 points again against Lloyd Norrick, so four threes, and... 10 for 18 from the field. He's, he's being efficient with the ball. Uh, talk about his his year so far and how that's kind of going. And, and are you pleasantly surprised or did you kind of see this kind of coming? Well, I don't know that you ever see it coming where a guy is going to score almost 33 different times in the first, you know, month and a half of the season. But um, I keep messing with him. If he made one more free throw, he could get to his 30, you know. But... I think he's had 28, 29, and 29, if I'm not mistaken, this year, and then other games of, um, you know, in the teens. So he, he's playing very well. I mean, he's playing, obviously, he's playing um, smart basketball. He attacks the rim a lot, and that, that allows him to also get some, some shots from the outside because teams are they're scared to get too far up in him because he's really quick with the ball. And um, he, he only... He not only does all that scoring, but he also kind of runs our team defensively. I mean, he's he's probably – I haven't looked at stats, but I bet he's got three or four steals a game. You know, so he gets six or eight points a game just from stealing the ball from somebody and making a layup. And um, he's getting more vocal. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll encourage people and, and talk to people uh, as we're going through the game and, and try to get people in the right spots. So – um, right now, pretty very, very pleased with LeBron. I mean, I think he is he's playing as well as any point guard we've had play in a while. Um, and, you know, it's it, the scoring is what everybody sees, I think, but he, there's a lot more going on there. And he's he's um, 
Very smart player. And Jake Karchek had uh, 21 points, another three triples for him, and and uh, he's obviously uh, used that momentum over the holiday break to, to feel a little bit more confident shooting the ball, and that's, that's a good thing for you guys. And uh, then you're all of a sudden you turn around and you're uh, seven and two. That's that's a nice yeah. uh, feeling to have right there. It sounds good. Um, yeah, it sounds better than two and seven. I guess we're gonna hold Coach uh, Wigman over here over the break here, and we'll talk about a seven and two team and what they're gonna do in the second half of the season here as we go forward as we take this break on Coach's Corner on WBCK ninety five point three FM. Coach's Corner on 95.3 WBCK. Proudly brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Here's Coach's Corner. This is Bill Braddock of the Battery Inquirer back here on Coach's Corner. Uh, Coach Wickman here. He's come off the bench uh, to stand in for a couple of other coaches as we have some sickness in our roster here this morning. But, uh, uh, Coach Wigman's a gamer, so that's why he's here for it, right? I always did come off the bench, Bill. That's, <laughs> that's right. right. That's the secret. Uh, we <laughs> talked about how uh, Lakeview is 7-2. and two. Uh, It's an awful nice start for the Spartans and, and a kind of a season where you had a lot of new faces in the playing group. Not a lot of new faces on the roster, but in the, in the main playing group. So kind of didn't know exactly what you're going to have when you came in. But 7-2 and two with this group and how you're playing uh, – that has to be uh, put a smile on your face a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like I said before the break. It's better than the other way around, right? Obviously, um, and I think uh, you know our first couple games were pretty pretty rough. I think we you know we be, we scored I think in the thirties to beat Coldwater by one, and and uh, then I think back to the Marshall game, and that was really ugly and tough too. And um, so maybe that helped us, you know, kind of find ourselves a little bit. But I think. Um, right now, our guys are kind of, I, I don't know, they just seem to really like being around each other. They seem to have a good time together. Um, they're, they're awful corny. They, they get on the bus and they sing and they do stuff that I, <laughs> but, but if it's that, making them have fun, then so be it, you know, and we'll deal with that. Um, but yeah, so at this point, you know, you know, with 22 games, we're nine, you know, so we're a little bit, not quite to halfway yet. Um, but I think uh, if you would have told me 7-2 at the beginning, I would have said, okay, we'll take that. And uh, coming out of the break, uh, you guys uh, were able to get some extra games in there, so you're not going to have the rest versus rest situation. But uh, there is the, the long weekend here, and then you're going to play Laurie Narks after that, a team that you just faced. Uh, that doesn't often happen. It hardly ever happens. You're playing the team back-to-back, and... and how, is there any positives or negatives to that that you see right away that you have to kind of deal with? Oh, I don't really see anything positive about it. <laughs> to be, I, you know, I, the only the only good thing, I guess, um, well, a couple good things is we know exactly what they're going to do. You know, and we we thought we knew going in, and it was pretty much what we thought it was going to be. Um, the bad news is we they have a kid named Cedric Huntley who is very very good. He's quick. He's tough. He's he's a good. He's just everything. He's he's a good, really good basketball player. Um, and even though we had a bullseye on his back on Thursday, he still ended up with 30, I think, or something like that. Um, so that that makes it tough knowing that we have to do something to slow him down. Um, and I think I think we'll have a little bit different approach this game to, to start the game. So that that's another positive, I think, is you know knowing that we can change a couple things up. They probably gained some little bit of confidence in that second half after getting down to you at halftime, and they they they, uh, they had a better second half and and how that kind of plays. And even though the loss is what it was, and they lost at the buzzer, and maybe they can gain something from that. And um, it is a this one time around it becomes a conference game, and you have some aspirations in the conference. So getting them at home in a conference game, it, it's a little bit bigger than that tournament Christmas tournament game, and a little bit more on the line. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, we we talked about uh, when we went over to Jackson. To, you know, we talked about an opportunity to win a championship of whatever kind. You know, so winning two games over there in a tournament, and you know, they were gracious enough to have the trophy and all that. You know, so that was in the moment was a big deal. Um, but but to be able to stay in the conference race, uh, we're going to have to. You know, I don't think Kalamazoo Central is losing too many games, so we're going to have to keep winning too. And uh, you know we're we're excited. We haven't played at home in 
I don't know. Seems like some September or something. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, so we're excited to have a home game coming up, and um, you know we'll get back at it Monday and, and see how much better we can get and, until we come in and play on Thursday for our, you know our next quiz, like we were talking right, about right. earlier. Uh, like home game, and then after that, you have a couple road games uh, following that, including a following week of Valkyrie Central on the schedule, which is always fun. And you are able to see a little bit of them over, over the break at the Turner Classic and a team that's been uh, struggling for wins. But they're a team that is going to grow throughout the season and probably be better at the end of the year than they are at the beginning. And you still have to play them twice here. So that, I know that's a big game for Lakeview whenever it happens. And and you don't want to look too far ahead, but Lloyd, take care of Lloyd Norris and then uh, have a couple of games after that. It's a, it's a fun stretch here you got coming up. Lloyd Norris, Porter's Northern, and Valkyrie Central, right? Yeah, I mean, it's going to get real busy. You know, I mean, we, and that's probably good that we didn't take too much time off, you know, because it's just going to be a, it's going to be a Tuesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday after, after this week for, from here on out. I think, you know, we'll get a Tuesday somewhere probably off, but, um, it's going to get real busy and you're going to play twice a week and sometimes it'll be a Tuesday Thursday where you're you know you only have one day of prep and that, and that makes it a little bit more of a challenge and so um yeah this is this is the fun part you know the 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 preseason and then the, the you know the season up till Christmas break is all is is one part of the season the way I look at it and now you're going to get into you know the meat of your conference season where you're going to be playing teams that are more familiar with you um teams that you know you're obviously going to play everybody twice and you know so they you know they'll make adjustments we'll make adjustments and all that kind of stuff but um you know you know as well as i do when you get into the middle of january and early in february and that that conference race is is right there um it makes everything a little bit more intense it makes every mistake a little bit bigger it makes every basket a little bit bigger so i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to see uh you know if we can continue to grow as a team we can continue to build our culture and our expectations uh, for each other because that's that's kind of where we're at right now. I think everybody is, uh, you know, they, they all want to be as good as we can be, I guess is yeah. the best way to put it. And uh, while we have you here, we uh, talked to Coach Kimber. We, we're allocating our resources here and, and, and drawing from where we can. We talked to Coach Kimber. He's a huge Michigan fan and about his Michigan championship game here in football. Uh, you're a big Michigan State fan, as we know, and uh, – the basketball team has had a light, nice run. Did you get to see the Spartans over the over the break? No, I didn't. I was a little busy, right? Yeah, I didn't have time to get up there. I, but I uh, they're a lot of fun to watch right now. They're on a yeah. little bit of a run, and uh, uh, they got back in Big Ten play and, and got a win uh, there. Talk about uh, what you see from the Spartans, and then you, give, you can coach up Coach Izzo a little bit here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, they're. I think to me, the the biggest difference from what I had, and I again, I haven't seen a ton of them. Um, we're always playing on the nights they're playing. Um, but they're just kind of making shots now. You know, I don't know what the difference is between now and earlier in the season, but I don't I don't I don't feel like they were getting any different shots earlier. They right. just weren't making a lot right. of them and I don't you know, I think I've always thought shooting is a lot about confidence and not only in an individual but as a team, you know, if you're struggling at the free throw line and a couple guys see the couple guys miss and then they're thinking, Oh, if I miss, you know, now it's a team thing and um, it just seems like they're making a lot more shots now. And so I, whatever Izzo did, he did a good job. <laughs> All right. well, we'll, we'll let him know that the Coach Wickman agrees yeah, with what he's yeah. doing there. Yeah, send um, it up to him. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, let Coach Wickman go. He uh, stepped in there when needed, and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about what the Lakeview Spartans are doing after next week and when we're back here in Coach's Corner. We'll be back with our uh, last break here after this on WBCK 95.3 FM. Coach's Corner on WBCK, brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Now back to the show. No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, the point guards. Okay. LeBron, LeBron's your point guard right now. Yeah. Should win, but you never know. Hi, <laughs> uh, this is Bill Broderick. We're back with uh, Coach's Corner here. Uh, we'll have a, our last break, our last segment here. We'll talk about uh, how Valkyrie Central did over the break and uh, Looks like Coach Durant's not going to make it down here uh, today to join us here. Um, St. Valkyrie Central went into the Chuck Turner Classic, still winless on the season, and they didn't really quite know who they were going to play uh, in that first game of the, of the tournament because Ypsilanti was originally on the schedule, and they pulled out at last minute. Uh, 
Power Potential was able to find an opponent for them. They uh, played Redford Westfield. And uh, it was a good thing that they came into town because it was able to give Valkyrie Central a win. And uh, and they won their first game of the year, 66-50. to 50. Uh, In that game, they went on a 20-7 to 7 run in the third quarter to pull away. Josh Harris had 18 points. And uh, we do have Coach uh, Durant Crum coming in the air to join us here. Coming off the bench and uh, getting ready to jump into the game here. That's a lot of fun. Um, we were just talking about how uh, you're able to get your first win over the over the break there, and you played <coughs> Westford Westfield. Uh, talk about how that's kind of like getting uh, getting that monkey off your back and make sure you get that win, and and that kind of helps going forward. You know, the longer you went without a win, it kind of wears on the team a little bit. Is that right? Oh, it does. It does. It's always good to get the first uh, the first win. So I mean, we're continuing to struggle a bit, but it was it was good to get. Uh, the monkey off our back, so to speak. In that game, Josh Harris came up with a big 18 points, and Karan Sears had 17, and Michael Mosley had 11, and getting some uh, production from different parts of the court, that has to be key going forward, because you're still looking for guys that, that can be a little bit more consistent for you, is that right? Yeah, we gotta get we got to get some other guys to step up and, and contribute, and not only offensively, but um, there's, there's just uh, other ways that you can make an impact in the game and, and, and help the team out, so uh, Mosley, Harris, and Sears have been the three that have probably been the most consistent offensively. Um, but they're the three that have varsity experience. The rest yeah. of the guys do not. So, um, And what was working well there? You guys kind of went on a little run, and uh, you look, maybe it looks like your defensive pressure kind of picked up a little bit, and you are able to get some uh, points off of that a little bit. Is that what happened there? Yeah, well, that's what we hope most games, and we just haven't been able to pull it off. Um, we, we did do a better job of that. Um, uh, in that first win. And uh, the, then you had to play back-to-back nights and played uh, city rival Penfield in the in the second game there uh, in the marquee game of the night, uh, the Chuck Turner Holiday Classic. Uh, your offense kind of disappeared in that one. You lost 49-29. to 29. And uh, from a coach, you see your team play one way one night and another way another night. And that's what you're going to get from a young team. But... Uh, uh, what can you do, or what did you see that night that kind of happened to make that a little make make that uh, happen for you guys and make the offense kind of go away? Well, I think um, as I said earlier, we're 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 young and we're continuing to to struggle to uh, figure out some things. Um, mainly identity. Uh, the guys just don't quite um, know um, who they are, what they want to be, and what what they need to do to get there. So it's a work in progress. Um, like I say, three guys have some varsity experience. The rest of the guys are are new to varsity ball, and it's it's a bit different than what than what they've done in the past. So um, we're still searching for our identity, I believe, and and we'll just have to keep plugging away. And guys are looking for their roles individually. I imagine to find out what what they what they are confident in doing. And once that kind of comes together, and they feel like they can do something on the floor, and and they know that they can do it. That. That's the trick there. Is that, that right? Will, that will definitely help. That's, yeah. that's what we're hoping for. Uh, you guys start the second half of the season kind of this week here, and you're playing another back-to-back night, which uh, isn't always great, but you have that experience from the Tur- Chuck Turner Classic and making sure that the guys get their legs underneath them. They're Stevensville Lakeshore at home and then Harbor Creek at home. Not a lot of travel on the bus, which is a good thing, but playing back-to-back uh, right off the break, is that a, a good thing or a bad thing, or is that just uh, – you, you want to hit the ground running and, and get some games in, is that right? Yeah, well, um, I, I I don't know whether it's good or bad right. necessarily. I think that uh, a lot of it depends on, on the team that you have. And, and right now with the um, issues that we're dealing with, we need to practice time. And we've had quite a bit of time to practice and get in the gym since, since the holiday tournament. Um, so I don't know necessarily whether the two games back-to-back will be an issue. Um, but we're going to try to be ready to play. Getting Harbor Creek at home is the big game on uh, Friday, the one we're kind of looking forward to. Uh, you saw Harbor Creek play over the holiday break, and um, that gave you a little insight to what they're doing. Uh, that's always been a fun game the last several years for for Bearcats playing Harbor Creek. Uh, talk about that game a little bit for you. So. Yeah, well, I think any time these, these guys uh, get a chance to play each other, I mean, because they grow up here in the city and they know each other pretty well, um, it's always a good 
uh, a good opportunity. So we look forward to the to the matchup and once again hope we can prepare and be ready. Getting a couple games at home after being at home over the break, uh, that's a positive. Uh, getting getting used to, the, I mean, you're not getting used to the rims or anything, but uh, getting playing on that court a lot uh, is it can only be a good thing. And um, looking to get some momentum going forward, how important is that going to be in the second half? Again, some momentum, some confidence, because yeah, I know you, you talked about before how you want to be better at the end of the year than you are right now. And this young team, that's really what you have to kind of lean on. And we're even chopping it down uh, a little finer than that, Bill. We're, we're trying to get better each day. Um, I tell the guys, each day we need to feel like we've accomplished some things and we have some goals starting out in practice every day. And we need to get better each day. And if we do, we'll be better down the road. Talking about a couple of guys that you thought maybe stepped up a little bit more over the, the last several games here as you guys kind of got confident. Well, actually, we're going to... Uh, have to cut that short. We're going to be talking a little more about the Bearcats next week as uh, we hear the music as uh, it's coming out. The, we think it's Coach Grant, Grant uh, to come on, on down, and uh, and we'll talk a little more about what the Bearcats are doing next week after a big week at home. We'll be back with our Coach's Corner next Saturday once again, and please join us here on 95.3 WBCK-FM.